How are we doing guys? It's Matt from Butcher Shop Taxidermy. I've had a lot of questions about it, so I figured I'll show you guys how to do this. And uh, yeah, then you can be more efficient with your cleanup, with your processing. And uh, yeah, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you guys how to break down in the field. This is where it all starts. You wanna learn how to quarter properly. First thing I like to do is take the front shoulders off. There's no bone connecting the shoulder to the carcass. So all you gotta do is find that seam in the meat, go right along the rib cage. Be careful when you get up here not to cut too much into your back strap. Like that. <laughs> you got one shoulder pulled off. Now I recommend have a few bags with you in the field. You've got one for your shoulders or one for a shoulder and hind quarter, one for the other shoulder hind quarter, one for your back straps and tenderloin, and then one for scraps, neck meat, or any other trim scraps you're going to be taking like your rib meat or any of this outer rib meat, just any trimmings. Alright, so now the next thing we're going to do since we got that off, we'll go ahead and uh, I like to pull the uh, pull the loins off next. So you see right here, that's the, that's your spine. We're gonna make a cut right there and go all the way down the spine. I go to about right there because you're gonna get some decent loin, especially these younger early season bucks. You're gonna get some good meat from there. All right, next you can kind of see. Take some of this cap off. see right where there that loin rides on the ribs. So if you go a little bit below it and you'll find you can slide your knife right between the back strap and the ribs. And back here you got those little riblets. So just watch what you're doing. You don't have a whole lot of guidance there. You're, you'll cut your uh, tenderloins if you're not paying attention. Alright, and we're taking it out. If you're doing this in the field, I recommend you carry some kind of a tarp or a bag or something. I carry, it's about a eight foot square piece of canvas. It folds up to about that big. You never know it's there. It doesn't weigh enough to make too much of a difference. Next, I'm going to take this hind quarter off, cut right in front of it, kind of roll onto its back. Sorry, I'm by myself, right? Show you a better angle on this, but right here inside, you cut straight down in the pelvis, or not straight down, but off to the side. You'll come to that ball joint for the hip. Bend it back as you push with your knife into it. And you go right through that tendon that's holding it together. And right here you got the, the pin of your hip bone. Go around that. take all that top sirloin off with it. Because you do not need that pelvic bone. If you cut it, all you're going to do is rip holes in your bags. And it makes my life easier, or whoever's processing it's life easier when it comes in. 
All right, now we'll go ahead and this one had a little bit of guts to it, so I'm not gonna keep a lot of this stuff. But we'll keep some of it. Yeah, that's right, you can eat deer raw. <laughs> Some people are scared of that CWD, and probably rightly so, but uh, I've been doing this for, well, I killed my first deer when I was 15, so like 21 years now I've been processing my animals. I'm still here, so it can't be that bad. All right, next we're gonna take that tenderloin out. You can kind of get it with your fingers. You just go underneath that riblet that I was saying a minute ago. And that runs all the way up basically to that ball socket on the inside. And all the way down about to where the kidneys connect in the front. Since we're in here, I'll go ahead and take the other one out. That's basically it. Now you get to your ribs, you can do one of two things. You can either, if you've got your pack saw with you, cut down here, take the ribs off with you. Or if you want to be patient, you can sit here and bone them all out. It doesn't take much extra time. Honestly, depending on the quality of your saw, it probably takes about the same amount of time. So yeah, that's basically it. You just repeat the same things on the other side. Obviously I didn't do this one with the gutless method. If you were gonna do with gutless method, you do basically the same idea. Just you don't break open the abdomen, obviously. You can take that tenderloin out by just making a slit right here through that uh, little bit of skirt meat and you can get in there and get it all out. It's pretty basic. So yeah, like I said, the rest, the other side of the deer, you do it basically the same way you did this side. There's not much difference. And at this point, if you're wanting the neck, which most people throw out jerky or ground or whatever you're gonna do with it, uh, you can either cut it off with your saw or you can bone it out, which like I said before, depending on the quality of your saw, boning it out may be the faster and easier option. I prefer to bone it, so I'll do that real quick. some of these extra scraps you missed. You don't want to leave much, if any, meat on, on the carcass, obviously. But, I mean, you leave a little bit. Nothing's perfect. But you try to be as perfect as you can be, I guess. Yeah, 
these side of the ribs are pretty well shot up. Exit wounds, you gotta love them. So yeah, I'm not gonna take a whole lot more off of this side than that, just because there's not much there and what is there is a little bit shot up. So don't worry about bloodshot meat necessarily. There's lots of tricks to getting that blood out. The way I was always taught to do it is you, uh, like if you got a roast that's bloodshot, take it and soak it in salt water overnight, and that salt water will pull all that blood out, and your roast will be good as good as it ever would be. So yeah, that's that. I'm gonna do the other side to this, and I will uh, get back with you guys in a few minutes, and I'll show you how the how to break the rest of this stuff down and uh, get ready to put it in family-sized portions. All right, thank you guys. We'll see you soon.